Hello everybody and welcome. This is our new episode in the series uh, on building our own clouds and we are going to cover different configuration possibilities for tunnels between two Cisco RV042s. Here we have location A. Location A has a dynamic IP address from the service provider, so does location B, and they can resolve each other's IPs uh, by using a domain name configured with no IP, and that we're going to cover in another episode. The Cisco RV042 doesn't try to resolve the domain names and ping it back when you connect, so you can see I configured on the top here the internet domain name as local group setup for the location A, and that goes as remote group set setup here on location B. Afterwards, you're going to configure the subnets. You see that the local group will always match the remote group on the other side, and that way uh, the routers will know to what tunnel or throughout tunnel send the traffic to to reach the specific destination. So here you have 42 here and 42 here, and location A is 50 is resolved on location B, 50 is here. Next, we have this configuration here IP by DNS resolved. That's gonna tell the router at location A to, resu to resolve this name, whatever.com. And that, since no IP is configured, is always gonna come to resolve this IP address here of location B uh, whenever it changes, because location B always refreshes its IP uh, with no IP for a correct DNS name resolution. Down here, in advanced, well, aggressive mode is gonna be always enabled because the locations have dynamic IP. Compress, it's a, it compresses the IP payload and it's supported by both routers. And, and keep alive is very important. I keep keep alive on only one site because sometimes both sites have keep alive enabled and they will try to reestablish an interrupted connection and collide. So I only became successful in keeping those tun tunnels up in the long term by having Keep Alive enabled only at one end. And NetBIOS broadcast will have the routers broadcasting NetBIOS packets throughout the tunnel and that will allow you to see all the computers on your network as if they would be at the same physical location. Yes. So you open my computer there or however that's called now or macOS network and you see the other computers there. It's quite nice. The fact that the RV042, unlike the other models I use, don't verify the domain name that comes in the credentials makes it easier to configure tunnels that way and that's the setting I've been using now. Otherwise, you know, it can fail more often because of no IP issues or if you don't know the trying to contact the device back during the connection phase will fail for some reason, yeah. In our second example here, our situation is easier. Since one of the locations has fixed IP, the other one can use aggressive mode, for example, or I mean main mode, and the whole th experience is much rel more reliable. The rest of the, com the configuration remains the same as the previous example, uh, the fixed IP being the only difference here. Down here, things are more or less the same. I have to keep uh, aggressive mode enabled because only one of the sides has dynamic IP. Uh, keep alive also in one location, but I'm using split DNS and that allows uh, location A to resolve the internal DNS queries against the domain controller in location B based on the suffix. Location B doesn't need this configuration because the DHCP is already telling the hosts there to look for the DNS server that is there. But that's not the case for location A naturally.
In this example, I was having issues to connect uh, the location with dynamic IP to the location with fixed IP and with using the DNS name authentication. And the only way I got it to work after a lot of trial and error because the logs don't help much was to have location B, the one with fixed IP, uh, doing a, a reverse DNS query to, not so it's a reverse DNS query, never mind, do a, a DNS query from itself using no IP back to the non-fixed IP address of location I. And the rest is the same. In this case here, uh, since both are using only the IP to communicate uh, either directly or by resolving it using DNS first, we don't need to use aggressive mode. And that you see here is this labeled. The rest is the same. Keep alive only at one end and split the DNS as it should be. In your case, this IPsec setup is simple. As long as you have both settings matching, it will connect. The only thing here to consider is choosing the strength of the encryption. Uh, you can here exchange speed and security is a trade-off. Unless you have a really fast connection like 100 megabits per second, this will not matter much. In my 2 megabit upload link, the system has more than enough uh, CPU power to you know, go through everything without causing a bottleneck. Something to keep in mind.